Very pleased to have with us from the great state of Texas, Congressman Ted Poe joining us here on Cam and Company. Congressman, thank you so much for your time, sir. Good to talk to you, Cam. Well, listen, uh, I know that you were a part of today's hearing on H.R. 822, the National Right to Carry Reciprocity Act of 2011. Uh, what can you tell us about how today's hearing went? I thought it went very well. First of all, the bill has 243 co-sponsors, which is uh, well over the uh, 218 needed to pass any legislation. That's good news. And uh, the hearing uh, also uh, uh, was very straightforward, talked about the constitutionality uh, of the bill, and uh, I think the consensus was uh, that it was certainly constitutional. It doesn't override state law. It just is an addition to state law and allows uh, states that have some type of uh, right to carry license uh, uh, to uh, allow other states that have the uh, right to carry license to uh, allow uh, uh, both a person to carry in their state as well as a, their home state. You know, I thought it was interesting. Uh, some of the, the most vociferous and vocal objections have come from New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Uh, and, and, I, you know, I had this thought yesterday. Mayor Bloomberg wants New York City marriage licenses recognized in Texas, uh, but he has a problem with a Texas CHL being recognized in New York City. Well, that's, that's true. And uh, uh, it's, it's a different mentality in some parts of the United States on the whole concept of right to carry. Uh, I think a better analogy really is a, a driver's license. Uh, states have their own rules on who can drive, uh, different, even different ages who can drive. And, uh, uh, but a state accepts uh, uh, a driver's license from another state, and then in some states you can be illegally in the state and uh, still get a uh, legal driver's license, and that's accepted in every state in the United States. So uh, this legislation is... Uh, I think it's a, a really a good idea, and it's certainly constitutional, and I think it's going to pass pretty quickly through uh, committee markup and as well on the House floor. Oh, really? So you think this bill is going to see movement? I do. I really do think it's going to see movement because we want it to move. The, you know, does the fact that we now have uh, really, I mean, 80 percent of the country is, is shall issue concealed carry or operates under shall issue concealed carry laws, uh, does that add to the... I guess, the weight of this legislation? Yes, it certainly does. And uh, the states that have a right to carry, uh, uh, the statistics show that crime goes down, violent crime goes down. Uh, and so there are, there are a lot of positive things about legislation, and it just makes sense to allow. Uh, if you have the right to carry in one state and you go to another state, you should be allowed to carry two if they have a, have a right to carry law. Absolutely. Uh, and so, again, with the support and the co-sponsorship of more than half of the House of Representatives, uh, you know, it seems like this bill would have a, a fairly clear path through the House. Um, do you anticipate uh, or, or do you know when a vote might be held uh, in committee on this bill? No, I don't. Uh, but uh, I do I do think it will be, uh, be soon. I can't tell you when. Uh, everything is uh, uh, kind of in limbo. Uh, right now because of the, the economic situation. Mm -hmm. But there is, but there are, it's bipartisan, and therefore uh, it, it should move, I think, very quickly through uh, both uh, the committee and final passage on the House floor. Did you hear any objections today, whether it was from uh, 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 Charles Ramsey, the head of the Philadelphia Police Department, uh, or any of your colleagues? Um, did you hear any objections or arguments that, that, that made sense or resonated with you? No, I didn't, and um, I used to, in my other life, I was a prosecutor and a judge, and, and generally speaking, peace officers, law enforcement folks, uh, they are opposed to more guns being on the street, and uh, therefore this, this type of legislation is something that uh, many of them don't, don't like that, mm -hmm. uh, which is very uh, understandable and traditional uh, in spite of the statistics that show that crime goes down. And uh, so he, he just brought forth that. And uh, I, underst I understand his position, but uh, it's, it's, more, uh, it's, it's more of a, uh, an issue that has to be dealt with and should be dealt with and, uh, on the personal basis. Uh, I did find it was interesting. We had two professors that, that actually said the Second Amendment uh, not only applied to uh, the individual right uh, to carry and the militia's right, uh, but also historically uh, the Second Amendment was there for 
many purposes, but one of those purposes was to protect citizens from government. I thought that was a, uh, an interesting statement coming from uh, two professors. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Professor Joyce Lee Malcolm and uh, Professor Dave Kopel uh, were, were uh, speaking about that. And, you know, look, I got to say, I mean, both of those professors have pretty good uh, credentials in terms of their education and their background, the research that they've done on this issue. That's correct. And uh, uh, they are good constitutional uh, experts. And, but I, I thought that was good that they said that. And, uh, so I was very encouraged by the hearing. Well, that's that's fantastic. You know, we've seen in Texas, uh, one of the states that have actually uh, done the research and have determined that right to carry holders are uh, more law abiding, frankly, than the general population. We know that right to carry works in those states where it's been implemented. And, uh, you know, now, again, with 80 percent of the country operating under shall issue laws, it uh, it does seem like it would make sense to have your CHL apply from sea to shining sea. I agree, and uh, th- uh, this is something Congress can weigh in on and uh, uh, pass some federal legislation to make uh, uh, make it uh, pr- uh, available for people who travel into from state to state that has the uh, right to carry a license. And uh, so, uh, I hope I hope we see it move uh, very quickly. And uh, um, as you said, uh, Cam, the statistics show that uh, uh, people who have the right to carry are are really uh, law abiding people and. Uh, uh, and the crime rate goes down when you have those. So let's let the states make that decision, and the states that agree to have it, uh, let them be able to person people to go from state to state and still have that right to carry. Hey, Congressman, thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program. Great talking to you tonight. Thank you, Cam. Good talking to you. Congressman Ted Poe joining us from the great state of Texas here on Cam & Company.